In this video, I'm going to try and provide you with a little more information about load bearing and non bearing walls. First uh, phase, it's going to be a three part video. The first part of the video is going to be we're just kind of going to go, go around the building with the roof on, roof framing. Second part will be with the ceiling joists. And the last part will be just the walls. I'm going to go through it step by step and see if I can give you a better idea because I'm having a lot of people who are having problems with this. Now remember, if you are going to remove a wall, I recommend contacting a structural engineer. I can look at some of your projects, give you some advice, but I cannot tell you which walls to remove or which ones you can't because I could be held, uh, I could get in a lot of trouble doing that. I am not a structural engineer. I want to make that a point. Okay, first part of the video here I'd like to point out is the wall on the gable end. Again, this is a single story. I'm going to try and do a couple of different videos and you'll be able to find them on the website to uh, in, in order when I'm done with them. Now, the end of a gable wall, even though it doesn't have as much weight on it as this wall here, the wall where the rafters and the ceiling joists are sitting on, this is still considered a load-bearing wall. And it is going to have a little more weight on it than some of these interior walls that might not be considered load bearing because you're going to have the weight of the stucco and the siding on here. And don't forget, these walls also provide lateral um, strength. That would be side to side strength. So if let's just say you remove this wall right here. Uh, if you did, well, then now you're going to have problems um, holding the building together. This wall holds the corners of the building together and, and provides additional strength. So, which is really the main reason why I'm doing this video here is because I got a question the other day about someone who kind of wants to remove a wall here. And even though it's a non load bearing wall, it's still providing strength to the exterior walls and to the rest of the home. So keep that in mind when you start removing these things. I'm just going to quickly go through here, give you, if I see something, I'm going to stop. So again, you can see where the rafters and the ceiling joists are sitting on top of the wall. This wall is supporting a lot of weight. Both of these exterior walls, the one on this side and the one on the opposite side, are supporting a lot of the weight in this building. Now the footings for these walls are the same most of the time. The footings for the uh, exterior going all the way around the perimeter are usually the same size and it is it, it is a little ridiculous sometimes especially when they get into digging 24 inch by by 15 inch wide footings 24 inches deep 15 inches wide and uh, you really don't have that much weight uh, I mean this weight on this isn't even close to the weight that you have over here so it does get a little ridiculous but I think part of the reason again I'm not a structural engineer part of the reason is to form a nice tight box around the entire building you want to have a nice these footings provide additional support to the entire home by kind of like keeping it in a tight uh, tight band let's say and again I'm just throwing that out there that might not be the truth that's just my observation on the subject because I really have a difficult time figuring out why these footings that don't carry that much weight actually have to be so thick so again like I said I'm going to go around the buildings um, with the roof on and uh, with it off to uh, give you a better idea here um, hopefully, I should say, better idea. Here we are again, and we have the roof on this uh, single-story home. Remember, the load of the roof rafters is, uh, most of it, I should say, is going to be placed on the exterior of the building on the walls where the rafters are actually sitting. Now, without the rafters, we can see the ceiling joists here. 
and get a better idea where the weight of the ceiling joist. Now, if you have ceiling joists, wherever they're sitting on, the, the uh, farthest point, and you can see here that we have them sitting on the outside uh, walls where the roof rafters are and then we have an interior wall where they're breaking and this is going to be the weight of the so this right here would be a load bearing wall in other words let's go ahead and head over there so you can see where the break is so this would be a load bearing wall wherever there is a break on the ceiling joist um, this is going to be considered the bearing wall, not the not the interior walls. Again, we're just going around the video, going around the building here. Next scene. Give you an idea. Here's the ceiling joist sitting on this wall, and we've already established that the perimeter walls are load bearing, and you can see why once you have the weight of the ra of the rafters and the ceiling joists. I mean, remember, the ceiling joists are going to be holding up. You're going to have drywall underneath the ceiling joists. And in some cases, they're actually going to brace sections of the roof off on the ceiling joists. So it's not like you can go in and uh, remove some of the ceiling joists sometimes because they're actually being used to support the roof. So keep that in mind also when you're looking for things to remove. Now this will give you a better idea here. These walls right here would not be considered load-bearing right here and over here. Would not be considered load-bearing because the weight from the structural engineer's point of view is going to be being transferred down to this wall, down to the footing, and it's going to be going all the way over to here to where it sits or it's uh, lapped wherever wherever it is. I mean, this don't forget you could always have a beam here, where the rafters are budding the, uh, under the beam with using hangers, and you could also have the ceiling joist sitting halfway on the wall. So you would have a ceiling joist breaking half on the wall. If you have a two by four wall, it would be half on an inch and three quarters, and the next one would be budding it, not lapping it. So you, you're, you can have that situation too. So again, non-load bearing walls are going to be the ones where the rafter, where the ceiling joists are not, um, the ends of the ceiling joists are not sitting on. Now, don't get confused here, because if you have a different type of uh, let's say you have a truss joist here, something. I'm not talking about a truss roof system. I'm talking about uh, where they use the TJIs for a wall, um, I mean for your ceilings. The TJIs might run all the way across. And if that's the case, you're not going to know where the load-bearing wall is. This is for conventional framing, not for engineered roof systems or engineered lumber. Because you could have a long truss uh, piece of engineered lumber, the TJIs or some other type of engineered lumber, and you're not going to have a break, but you would still have a bearing wall. So this, this would just apply to conventional framing. And again, remember, this is just an idea. I'm just trying to give you an idea using some examples here. Your building could be different, and that's why I'm, I'm suggesting contacting a structural engineer. Again, here, this would be a non-load bearing wall. Bearing wall right here where, where they're breaking. And then we already established that this area here would pretty much be non-load bearing. But don't forget that these walls, like this wall right here, going all the way across. Let me go back here. This wall here wouldn't be considered a bearing wall, but it actually could be considered a wall um, that would be providing strength to the exterior walls, the lateral strength, the side side to side movement same thing with this wall so let's just say that you say hey I've established the fact that this is a non load bearing wall I'm going to remove this this entire wall here well then you've just now weakened the structure of the building 
So this is the main point I'm trying to drive home uh, in this video, and, and I'll be able to do it. It'll be look a little clearer in the next section when you when we don't have the ceiling joists. But you need to keep in mind where the ceiling joists are here and the roof when we do remove that uh, to get an idea of what we're what we're going to be looking at. You're going to have to build a picture in your mind of how this thing's put together. When I remove all the ceiling joists and I remove the roof rafters, you're not going to be able to get an idea. Hey, where was it breaking at? You know, where were the rafters sitting on? Where weren't they sitting on? But you'll be able to go back in the video and uh, check it out to see. That's why I'm spending so much time on it here. Okay, here, this is a bearing wall. This is where the joists are lapping. Going all the way across. Bam. Non-load bearing. Non-load bearing. Non-load bearing. Non-load bearing wall over here. And of course this wall right here. Non-load bearing. Bearing walls are going to be where everything's sitting on. The end of the ceiling joists and the end of the roof rafters. And remember, I can't stress this enough, this is just for conventional framing, not for engineered roof systems. Okay, the last part of the video. We are going to remove the roof and the ceiling joists. We're just going to have walls. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. And if you can just kind of remember where the framing members, ceiling joists, and roof rafters were sitting on, the roof rafters and the ceiling joists were sitting on the outside walls here. These are going to be carrying the bulk of the weight of the of the entire roof system. So bearing wall on the outside, bearing wall again on the outside. This is a bearing wall because remember the ceiling joists were lapping on it. The ceiling joists were sitting on top of it. That's going to give us a better a better view of the home. Again, it's, as you can see where there's a big advantage to providing you with these different illustrations with the roof and the ceiling joists missing. So this right here it, even though it's a non-load bearing wall, just like this one here, non-load bearing wall. Let me come back over here. Non-load bearing wall. These walls, and, and I'm just going to go through the building and point out the important walls here. This one, this one, the entire wall here, this wall here, and this wall here. So these walls you could probably remove in, in looking at this building here. But these walls right here provide side to side or lateral strength to the building. Without them, um, then you're going to have an extremely weak structure. So keep, keep that in mind. I mean, you can remove these walls um, if you have parts of the roof system set up correctly but I'm not going to go into that on a uh, detail on that because again this would it would vary too much um, from job to job so the the way I have this home right here it really is it's a it's a well-designed home structurally because it provides you with a tie all the way through the building on this this way and provides you with a tie this way you know you can see here that if you had a strap here and a strap here that these walls would tie together and you could do the same thing here with your ceiling joists or running a strap with some blocks to connect these walls um, together then you really have a nice uh, structurally engineered building um, there but like I said you can't remove these walls um, all the time without affecting the strength of the building. I hope that makes sense. Another view. So again, if we took this door out and we just made an opening here, then we've just reduced the strength of by using this long wall here to provide us with a nice uh, connection to the other side that goes all the way through the building. So keep that in mind. You remove a, a small portion of the building that you think is not going to be a problem. And again, remember the ceiling joists were sitting on top of this wall. 
So that's also going to be uh, this. This would actually be a bearing point where this wall uh, right here. Let me see if I can get that. Uh, we'll go. We'll see if we can get, get another scene there. You know. So let, let's let's just say that you remove this part of the wall, and you're thinking, okay, this is a non-load bearing wall, no biggie. I'm just going to take and remove this. Well, now you've just separated the connection and you've reduced it to let's just say about a six-foot wall without putting a strap on. Now, you could remove this section and keep the tie as long as you have straps, some type of a connection that is carrying it all the way through. So, and again, I'm not going to go into detail on that. I guess that'd be a little more advanced framing. There we go there. Again, non-bearing non-bearing, non-bearing wall, non-bearing wall, uh, non-bearing walls here, you know. So you're probably thinking, hey, I could take all of these walls out right here. You could take all these, take all these out. But again, you can't because it's part of the, a part of the lateral connection. And, and, and uh, just keep that in mind. You can't just remove a wall because it's a, it's a, if it's a, it's a non-load bearing wall because it could actually be a vital component to the rest of the building and I I'm pretty sure that I've driven that point home now I've said it about uh, 10 times so there we are coming around the corner there again this is an important wall both because it's carrying the weight of the ceiling joist and it's providing lateral strength to the rest of the house. I'm not just talking about lateral strength to this uh, out exterior part here. If it's connected to another wall, then it's going to be providing strength all the way through. And some homes, believe it or not, are going to be designed with that in mind. They cannot lose that structural connection, the ties that uh, the structural engineer put in and uh, would be assuming that nobody would be removing. So anyway, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment area. And I hope I didn't get a little too winded on it, but I'm sure you'll let me know by hitting the old thumbs up or thumbs down button. And again, that's how I can tell whether or not these videos are good or not, um, whether or not they're actually videos you uh, guys and gals want to see. So keep it up, either good or bad, let me know. Don't forget to check out more videos at this link. You can also visit the website. The upper left-hand corner should be a button marked videos. Put together a list of videos that you might have a difficult time finding on YouTube. So organize lists in different categories. Go check it out.